Simplex. Yo. Thanks for rolling through. Thanks for having me. Saturday morning. Yeah. Bright and early. <laughs> Another beautiful Adelaide overcast day. <laughs> Cold. Get me out of bed early on a Saturday morning, Got man. Get me out of bed early on a Saturday morning, man. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be more relaxing time. Oh, Chilling. shit. Now, um, look, you've been around, you know, you've been around the traps for a minute. A little bit. Um, originally from Adelaide. Adelaide, born and bred. But now in? Brisbane. Yeah. Living in Brisbane. So I guess start, you know, start from the beginning. The when, beginning? Yeah. I was so. born. <laughs> <laughs> Crawled us, around for a little bit. Nah. Take, take us to like when you first, I guess, when you first got into hip hop and then when you actually first started writing rhymes and shit like that. First sort of hip hop. This is back in the eighties, man. So I don't think would you have been born then? Yeah. Eighty four. Eighty four. So this is probably eighty eight. I got a a tape from my sister's boyfriend. On one side it had Public Enemy, Yo Bum Rusher Show. Mm. And the other side was NWA. And he gave me that tape and I played it at school. It blew everybody's minds, man. We'd never heard it. We'd never heard stuff like that before, man. Swearing and then, like, fuck the police and all that kind of stuff. Do you know what I mean? And then um, and Public Enemy on the other side. And that's probably the, that tape was the thing that, yeah, got me hooked. And then who'd you start listening to, you know, after that? From there, it was just trying to dig up whatever hip-hop you could. Do you know what I mean? Because this is before internet. For fucking I knew about the magazines and stuff like that, you know what I mean? And then there was this Jehovah's Witness kid at my school, and um, he'd found a bunch of tapes on fr someone's front doorstep, and it was like um, pub, like three Public Enemy tapes. There was Kill It Will, Ice Cube, um, NWA, and like Yo Bum Rush Show, Fear of a Black Planet, and he rocked up to school with these tapes. He goes, who wants to buy them? And I was like, oh, because I'd already had this other tape. I was like, fuck, I want these tapes. So I went home and he wanted 20 bucks for them. I said to my mum, oh, this guy's got like five tapes for 20 bucks. I need them. And then that, she gave me the 20 bucks. I got those tapes. And then we right. ruined our primary school <laughs> with these tapes. <laughs> so you were in primary school at this stage? Yeah. Wow. It was primary school. But towards the end of sort of primary school. And then was it when you got into high school that you started picking up a pen and you yeah. know, writing your own shit? Yeah, probably around high school, we, we, me and my next door neighbor used to just make up funny rap songs about the dude that lived up the road. So we'd just, <laughs> his name was is and we used to call him um, <laughs> And And, um, <clears throat> yeah, we used to just sit there beatbox and make songs up about the dude up the road and then i just slowly started penning stuff do you know what i mean mm. i'd freestyle a lot so that all be fucking shit out and then um yeah just gradually picked up found more knowledge in hip-hop started listening to newer stuff and yeah so who were some of the cats that you started you know doing shit with whether it was writing rhymes or you know, anything music related? Uh, probably, it was dudes from my school, but they didn't really take on to it. This is at Aberfoyle Park High. Yeah, they didn't really get into it much. Do you know what I mean? So around 94, I met up with this dude called Ben Howard. And he went by the name of Just Be. And that's when we sort of, end of 94, started 95, we started Terra Firma. And then all we used to do is just freestyle, man. It's just freestyle, we'd make beat tapes. I had a, a record, just drum breaks on it called Drum Crazy. They used to bring out all these, these records with just drum breaks. And I played guitar over the top of them, and just record it on a, a tape player. And then fucking would just sit in parks, drink, and freestyle. Fucking from morning to night to whatever, man. And then we sort of started going out to parties, 
and that's how we sort of met up with like the hood and fucking um, collapse and all that and uh, blockade because they used to freestyle parties down south and um, and that's how everybody sort of met and certified and that's how that sort of came about because it's just dudes freestyling at a party like hey you freestyle yeah I freestyle fuck it, let's freestyle and I was the only do that beatbox so I'd sit there and beatbox for fucking two hours straight man just taking breaks just to take a quick sip of a beer and then keep going we well, got a bunch of dudes just fucking not shutting up. <laughs> At what point did you put together the whole terra firma thing? That started around 95, man. 94, 95 with, um, it was me and Just B. It was just us two at the start. And I'd met, I'd known Raf because he's Brazilian, um, half Brazilian, half Chilean. Um, and I met him through, um, my parents and Raph was into hip hop. I was into hip hop, and then we just sort of started hanging out. And it was just me, Raph, and Just B, sort of freestyling and that. And we'd go out with this other dude, Scotty, as well. He'd, um, yeah, just go out and freestyle. And then um, Just B left with me and Raph, and then we got Dimesy as a DJ. And then um, Mike Les joined in later on, about a year later. And then that was the terra firma that you sort of saw today. And that's why you see the, the early stuff was just me and Raph, like a lot of the time, because it was just us two there. And then the first album. Wake in the Past. Yeah. Now, what year was that? That's also early 2000s? Yeah, it came out. Like in 2003, but that was that should have been like a demo tape, man. Do you know what I mean? Cause it was just it was just shit that we recorded over the years. And we put it up on mp3.com.au. Do you know what I mean? And um, uh, stuff on other compilations on um, like Culture of Kings and Obesity stuff like that. And then we just thought, ah, oh, fuck it, we'll just put it all together. And that's why we called it Waking the Past. It's just sort of like a all our tracks that we had done on one product sort of thing. So Now that actually did pretty well. Like that got a pretty good reception. And you guys had the the join on there, The Nights the Heavens Cried. Yeah. And that was the one that I got introduced to first. I think a lot of people, man, eh? Hey, it just mm. sort of uh we wrote that track about a, a mate that passed away. And um I think Fresh picked it up and it just went nuts. But like years after, like seven years after it got picked up, um, yeah, it went nuts, man. So you, hang on, so you recorded that song and then seven years later? Yeah. That was recorded in 99. And what, so that got picked up in like 06? 07. Yeah. Wow. It's pretty crazy though. And then, so you guys have put out the first the first album. It's done pretty well. Yeah. And then I guess you guys started doing a lot of shows yeah. off the back of that. We done. That's all we did, man. For five years, it's just fucking shows everywhere. Got to the snow, play snow shows, and um, and then the culture of kings was coming out during these times. Do you know what I mean? So we were on the well, part of that and going everywhere with that as well. So that was cool. And then at what year did you drop the second album? That was oh, oh, 09. Mm. Because I heard that when you guys did the launch for that at HQ, yeah. you actually sold that shit out. Yeah. So tell us, oh, now I missed that night. Fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, yeah, tell us about that because I've been told about it and I heard that that shit was popping and you just didn't actually expect to sell it out. Nah, nah. It was, um, I think Blake is the one that sort of pushed us to do HQ. And I was like, nah, man. Nah, we should do something fucking small. Because like. HQ is about, I think it was 1,100 yeah. at a sellout. Yeah, and we didn't expect that at all, but I think... Um, yeah, 
we were doing like some festival sort of stuff, Blake put together and like big day outs and sort of stuff. And he sort of noticed the crowd that we were sort of getting. And um, yeah, I was real nervous about that, man. Eh? I thought it was going to be like 50 people fucking at the front and like 25 of them are your family members and your next door neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> That dude that walks around in gum boots from fucking in the run of and stuff. Nah, it was crazy, man. Like we didn't expect that at all. And then um Yeah. How, did you sell it out before the night or did you sell it out on the night? I think it came on the night. There's only like a handful of tickets sort of on the Thursday night or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, fuck, this is crazy. What's the most memorable show that you remember doing? Uh, well, like, as in good or as in bad? I guess give us one of each. Uh, well, there's the Rotunda one. Open, <laughs> open up a Rotunda in the middle of nowhere. With like, there's one fire twirler dude. Um, yeah, that was pretty memorable sort of thing. And he was, I'm pretty sure it was raining as well. So, yeah, that was pretty fun. What? They've always been fun, do you know what I mean? No matter how many people, that's the thing about, uh, I don't know, performing and that, do you know what I mean? It's always fun. There's always something like um, one time we played, what's that um, techno rave thing that used to happen out in the, oh, the bush? Enchanted, Enchanted. Forest. Like yeah. One time we played Enchanted and um, they're like, oh, you're at, this stage at this time. And I'm like, all right, no worries. And so we rock up and it's in this big dust bowl, fucking middle of the field of, like this field in the middle of nowhere. And we're standing there, we're like, all right, we look at the map and we're like, all right, we have to be over this place over here. And so we grab all our gear and we start walking over there. We walk past this massive stage. We're like, oh, fuck. That'd be wicked to be playing that stage, eh? And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. We keep walking. We rock up to the place where we think it is. And we're like, what the fuck? What's this place, man? And it was like um, a walkway. Like a bunch of stairs that have been made up out of um, scaffold and that. And there was just like a DJ set up there. And I was like, is this where we're playing? Well, it must be. And I'm like, all right. There was no mics, no nothing there. And we're like, oh, man. We just got to try to set it up and we're like asking dudes for mics and get all the mics and everything like that. So anyway, we start playing this show. We're hanging off the, the scaffold and that and climbing up as we're playing because there's no stage. It was just dirt and stuff. And then, um, yeah, we finish, pack up, leave, walk back past that big massive stage that was wicked. We're like, ah, oh, that would have been wicked to play there. Then we find out after that we played, <laughs> we were supposed to play at that stage, the main stage thing there. But we just, we got mixed up <laughs> and ended up playing underneath this scaffold staircase sort of thing. So so you played on the completely different, yeah. the wrong stage. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't find out till after, man. So they're the adventures that we go on, man. Eh? How did you fuck that up? Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Terra firma. <laughs> Blame Enchanted, no stage management. It's Daniel's fault. Oh, shit. And then, so, I mean, Terra Firma, now you guys are not actually actively recording music. Nah, and, not right now. And do you think that we'll ever get anything? Maybe. Who never knows? say never. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm still, I'm still doing stuff. I'll, Raffi still writes raps. You know what I mean? Dimesy still delivers boxes. So, and, <laughs> <laughs> and then, I guess, so that album came out. Music to Live By, that came out in 09. Yeah. And then you ended up dropping a solo uh, a few years later. Yeah, that was 2011. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that record. Um, that was sort of, I'd always wanted to drop a solo. But um, and a lot of those tracks I'd started in like, early 2000s, do you know what I mean? And so just sort of finally, after we sort of 
done a ter- last Terra Firma album. I wanted to just sort of concentrate and just get it out, man. Because mm. one thing that I always wanted to do is produce, record, write a whole album, man. So it's not fun. I can tell you that much. Stresses stresses you out and because you're relying on one person. You know what I mean? It's like yourself, apart from mastering. I did everything you know, and scratches and that. Um, yeah, it was it was good to get it out. Now you had a you had a joint on there. I, I can't remember the name of it, but in the hook it's something like um something to the extent of uh we used to, you know, freestyle around tables. Yeah. Now we argue about labels, yeah. some shit like that. Tell us about that joint. That that was basically venting about the whole industry and do you know what I mean? Cuz it at one point there, the in, like the hip hop scene got very fickle, man. Do you know what I mean? Like dudes are arguing about fucking or having beef about fucking shit. You wouldn't even why would you even have beef about that? Do you know what I mean? So it was a lot of um, yeah, putting that into the spotlight. The the arguments that we have over nothing. That when you look back in. Five years time is like oh, well, what were we arguing about that for? Like, oh, fuck those man, no. just egos and fucking yeah, all the, all the bullshit, all the bullshit, man. You know, in anything, if anything where people are tight together and um, whether it be your office or fucking DJs, DJs will do the same. Do you know what I mean? Oh, look at him, he's not fucking. He's, he's only using two fingers to yeah, crab, to not do the three. crab. <laughs> Toy. <laughs> Even writers, man. Do you know what I mean? It's like fucking yeah, there's politics. The politics of everything. Can, but it doesn't mean... In the end, it doesn't mean nothing, man. Eh? It's mm. just... We're just all doing the same thing for the same reasons, man. In 2007, yous, that's when you put out Damo's album. Yeah. Now, when that come out, Obviously, in terms of punchlines, and probably still to this day, that shit's head and shoulders above anything I've probably heard from Australia and even, you know, US, like a lot of US stuff. Yeah. Like, you a lot. You have to go back and listen to it three, four, five times. And you pick up things. I still like, I like, I bump it every now and then, do you know what I mean? And I just laugh at the lines that he spits. Like, I'm just fucking, you know, um... Yeah, it was crazy. The first time I met him, I was like, mm, this dude, man, hey, like, fucking, he just looked like, he was just a scrubby, fucking, wearing a polo with fucking all the buttons undone and, like, shitty shorts and shitty sneakers and shit. And, like, oh, where, where does this dude live underneath the bridge or something, man? And then when he spits, man, you, like, fucking, you gobsmacked. I was like, wow. I think, you know, pause, pause and, um, loops and that brought him around my house once because they were doing their radio show back back in the day and um and they brought him and a couple of other dudes words and this other dude that was american he lived here for a little bit and then bailed off and they're like oh can we just record something for our radio station i'm like yeah no worries man this is when i was li- living at uh on the pat in Glenelg there and um yeah, the stuff that he was spitting, he rocked up and his song was like, yeah, good day. Shaggy hair and fucking um, Bart Simpson's thongs, like the Simpsons thongs and shit like that. Fucking, um, and then the shit that he spat, man, it was just crazy. I, I'd never heard anything like it, man. I've heard dudes close like it, but, um, and it'd be like, oh, wait up, I'll try this line instead, you know what I mean? And he's had books and books of just, raps and i was like i'm gonna try working doing a track like a solo track or whatever he's like yeah no worries and then we just sort of started building off that man and then yeah and then one track went to two tracks went to three tracks went to like 20 tracks man and then we put out we had declassified files and it was like 20 tracks and we like called three three tracks or something it was 17 tracks 
And then, so you produced and recorded the whole thing? Yeah. Now, that record, from what I heard, you know, got him offside with a few people. A lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Now, when you guys were recording it, did you ever hear some shit and you like were like, yo, I don't know if you can say yeah, that Yeah, I always said that. I'm like, oh, yeah, you going to say that? You're like, yeah. I'm like, all right. Like, you couldn't say anything like around him either, man. Do you know what I mean? I'd tell him stories and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden when he's spitting, I hear that story in that line. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> so you can't. Like, fucking, he soaks everything in, do you know what I mean? Like, I'd tell him, like, little little gossip bits or shit that's happened or whatever, and fucking, the next time he comes around to record, that line's in there or something like that. I'm like, oh, man, this guy's got, he's got to be quiet around here. <laughs> that's wild. But, um, yeah, he just, he's a machine, that dude, man. Eh? He's supposed to be releasing some other ma- album with an American dude, but... I don't know what what's happened with it or whatever, but yeah, he's a machine. Now, with some of the with some of the lines, I guess that were seen as you know taking shots at people. I know that he had um, a line in there that aimed at hijack or maybe torture at the time, and I got told that based on that line, he couldn't go to Sydney for a while. Torches and eth- ethnicity. Uh, that one? Which one? Yeah, what 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 was it? Uh, no, I don't think it was over that. I think it was he got into trouble. He'd done this other like a mixtape thing. And he'd said something about um Sir Rec. Uh, on that line. I think that's where dudes were flipping over it. But it was just I think it was just one dude that was flipping over it and so Do you remember what the line was? Something about his age or something like that. But now he had another line in there that was um taking shots at Hunter. Yeah. It was um and I actually spoke to Disaster about this. And the interesting thing is that I think the line was something to the extent of, you know, messing with me, you're asking for disaster like heads at a hunter show. Yeah. Or something something to that. That, was, that wasn't like a, a diss sort of thing. It was like Done it as a, like a play in words sort of thing, but Hunter took it as a diss, and then Hunter came back with a a diss track that was on the Battle Hogs or. Well, here's the interesting thing. I heard Battle Hogs three, not that long ago. Is that the one that didn't never, come out? It never got released. Yeah. Now I didn't know that. You know, there's fifteen or so tracks done. Yeah. In there, the dude that showed me goes, "Have a listen to this." And he's like, I think this is the response to Demo. Now, I never heard this. Yeah. So I was like, oh, wow, what the fuck? Yeah, that was supposed to come out. The See, that would have been good to see, the a Demo Hunter fucking beef thing. But that second one didn't come out. But I think Demo knew about it, the Hunter one. And then he had already written one back, do you know what I mean? But it never got recorded and never... Never eventuated. Yeah, never eventuated. So it just all fucking sizzled down. That would have been a classic on Wax Beef. Yeah, fucking earth, man. It would have been wicked. What other what other lines did he have in there or who else did he upset in there? Fucking everyone, man. And even dudes that, like, picking stuff that wasn't, oh, maybe that was aimed at me. Do you know what I mean? Like, dudes were, it was good. It was a good shake-up of the scene and, like, it would, would have been good to see dudes come back. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, it wouldn't, no beef would have eventuated on it, but beef and wax was cool as shit, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, even back in the day, like, um, hieroglyphics versus Hobo Junction. You know what I mean? Um, all that kind of stuff. Fucking, all those beefs that came, that happened. It was wicked listening to it, man, eh? But, a gig that gets talked about still to this day, it's kind of like folk story. Yeah, is the Sharky's pool hall the incident? Sharky's pool hall, fucking Sharky's, is, that was bound to happen. Now tell it. Well, I mean, were you there? there? We were supposed to. We were playing there, man. Hey, eh? and then um, we were on the way there, and I get a call from my sister, 
who's underneath a pool table saying, people come in here and fucking shooting guards and fucking, it was chaos, man. I was like, what the, what the fuck's going on there? Because we were just at home, man. I was living at Morpha Vale at the time and we were just chilling before the show. It was us and I think LC, LC was supposed to play mm. there or Tremina, Brad Strutt and... Um, and we used to go to Sharky's just normally, you know, it's just a pool hall, dirty, dingy, down south pool hall, but still just a place we'd go to have a few drinks and play pool, man. And yeah, I got that phone call and I was like, we got to go. So we head straight there. And um, yeah, by the time we got there, there's just cop cars everywhere. Fucking apparently, allegedly the... The bouncer there had a he had a gun. Why would you even have a fucking the security had a, like a gun? Well, I heard it was like Chub the you know the Chub security that does the rounds. They're it's not like, actually security at the venue. They kind oh, of right. go from so that that's what I've been told. And he was the one that actually had the strap. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering why would you why would you your doorman have a gun, man? It's like it's a south, but it's. Sh- yeah, shit goes down, but you don't need a gun, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, yeah, apparently he got rolled on. Something happened. He got rolled on. Got his d- gun taken off of him. And dudes just went nuts. And he got out of there. And then they got caught. <laughs> and another another one that, that like, at least we still we still hear about, and I wasn't there for this either, was... When Mass MC had a show at Traffic, yeah, and it was the same night as I think Loonies and Tech Nine. Yeah, we played that Loonies and Tech Nine show at Thebby, and then um, we all went back. Like the show ended, and it was Mass MC and Bones, and I forget who else was playing that night at at Traffic, and everyone was like, "Hey, there's a show happening at." Traffic, we should all go there. Do you know what I mean? That the everyone's like, yeah, no worries. So we all head there just normally, and then um, yeah, I think I can't remember who jumped on. Someone jumped up on stage while Mass is rhyming. I can't remember. I don't know if you know. One of the one, one of the, the guys from the US. I think maybe corrupt. I heard of yeah. the dog pound. I think Dog Pound was with the Loonies and Tech Nine. Yeah, it was all them. So one of those guys from their camp jumped on stage while Mass was while rapping. Mass is rapping. Yeah. And then she just got crazy, man. Hey. Um fucking Yeah, I think there's a bit of pushing and shoving, and then Mass fucking started fucking saying shit on the mic, and then the crowd started chanting stuff. And it was, it was good feeling like you're sort of patriotic, like, yeah, fucking Aussie hip hop dudes. But at the same time, we're like, yeah, it, was, it got pretty heated, man. Do you know what I mean? Weapon X and Ken Hell. Your mates. <laughs> well, I never met him, you know? I never met him. I just remember because I started catching on to Australian rap around 01. Do you know what I mean? Like I yeah. heard, I remember hearing Soul of the Beat by The Hoods. Yeah. And I remember seeing Delta Freestyle at a craze gig. Yeah. Referring to the 720 bus and the crowd's going nuts. And I'm like, who's this dude? This dude's dope. Um, I and then see I Delta think, on the 720 bus. I'll be at the, you know, the interchange. Yeah, yeah, Ranella interchange. No, nah, no, nah, the one um, uh, where the hospital is. Oh, no longer interchange. No, nah, no longer the Flinders. Oh, Flinders, yeah, 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 Flinders Medical Center. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you have the buses and everything go there. I see Delta on the back of the sweat 720, like, waving. I'll be sitting there waiting for the 218 back up to the hub. Yeah, I used to roll on the 218 at some point as well. Yeah. Shit. Um, 218A. I pass all that <laughs> shit, man. Hey. So a few years later, I started noticing that the whole American accent was coming in at that time. You know, you had, um, I think, Jay Wes. Yeah. It was more of an R&B singer, I think. Yeah. You had Weapon X and Ken Hell. You had a few cats that were sort of dabbling in that. And yeah, you I think you and Weapon X, you guys had a bit of an incident. A little bit of incident. 
<laughs> tell, tell us, tell us about that. Oh, that's it's a long story, but we got. I'll, time. I'll give you the I'll give you the shortened version. Now, nah, basically, it was the short short version was um, him interrupting an argument I was having with someone else, and then um, yeah, he just staunched up. I don't know this is that sugar. Um, yeah, I was having an argument with someone. It was not an argument. It was a discussion. Do you know what I mean? And he came in like, oh, he's my mate. I'm like, this is nothing to do with you, man. Hey, just, just go back over there. And he's like, nah, he's my mate. I'll stand here and I'll, I'll go up. I'm just, I'm talking to him. He's like, it got a little bit heated. Do you know what I mean? Because we had all had, this is after the, some battle that, what's the? Not the battle for supremacy. Yeah. After the, the Adelaide. Oh, the heats. Yeah. In Adelaide. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I was having an, a bit of an argument with a dude that ran that. Do you know what I mean? And, um, yeah. And that's when Weapon X sort of came up. And started fucking doing these ones, and it wasn't it wasn't supposed to be like that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And then yeah, one thing led to another, and then all just hell broke loose and fucking. Now, did you know him at this point? Yeah, I'd met him a few times. You know, we weren't mates because I don't know. We just he, he was a nice guy. He wasn't he wasn't a bad dude. We weren't mates or anything like that. We just associates we just knew each other like this like the scene do you know what i mean and um i think just alcohol and ego and did yeah. him have it did him rapping with an american accent have anything to do with the way you felt towards him oh a little little bit but not much <laughs> but not it's not why i fucking why we like, ended up fighting or whatever it was because he tried to staunch over you. Yeah, he just he got into if dudes are going if someone's having an argument already and we come over and like, ah, oh, it's not your argument. I'm like, ah, oh, that's it. <laughs> Fucking you take the advice, man, do you know what I mean? Or you get end up getting stomped into the fucking bar. Did you come out on top? Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Had pressure holding me back. Like this. With my arms back, pulling me away. Thanks, pressure. And then yeah. that was the end of it? Nothing ever came of that? Nah, and then that was the end. But then, this is all, um, and then I went, this is that battle supremacy thing. So the actual argument was, I said to the dude that was running out, I was like, oh, I'm coming over to um, uh, Melbourne to see the finals. Because I love that. I love watching the battle shit, you know what I mean? And I'm like, am I able to get hooked up on the door or whatever? Because I'd been in the one previous, done shit. I was terrible. Fucking, we had the our launch the night before, so I'd stayed up all night um, and flown to Melbourne and just done terrible. But that's another story. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I asked the dude for, can I get a couple of tickets? Because I didn't from the first one, I didn't get nothing, man. No, I paid for my own flight there. Fucking. Um, and he got sold out. DVDs got pressed up. I didn't get a DVD. Didn't get nothing, man. And I was like, can I get a couple of tickets so I can go and watch it? And he was like, nah. And I'm like, nah. I go, what about the like the first one? We, I paid for my own to get over there. The thing sold out, man. It was on. We had fucking all big sponsors and it was a huge show, man. And I'm like, nah. He goes, nah. I was like, how does that make sense, dude? Like, fucking, and that's where the argument started. And that's when um, Weapon X jumped in. That's when Weapon X got knocked down. And then still, I still had my flights booked for this show. And I was like, fuck it, because this is the next weekend. Do you know what I mean? And I'd, so I'd have had this fight, and it all spilled out into the street. Then, fucking, yeah. Rundle Street was like chaotic, man. There's dudes fighting everywhere. It was it was pretty nuts. Um, 
because I already had my tickets booked. And I'm like, all right, so I'm flying to Melbourne. So I go to Melbourne, and um, uh, another dude I knew that had done stuff for that Chopper Reed thing, he had tickets, and he goes, do you want, do you want a couple of tickets? And I'm like, yeah, fucking no. And so fucking I rocked up to this show with another little Asian mate of mine, Robbie. It was just us two, man, and it was their show in Melbourne, in their thing, if you know what I mean. And I rocked up by myself. So I was like, fuck it. I'm gone, man. Hey. Even though that shit happened last week with and then I'd said to the dude that ran the whole thing, I fucking I drilled him like just fucking in an argument on Rundle Street here as well after the fight and everything. Yeah, we ended up rocking up. It's just me and him. And I'm like, we're in enemy territories <laughs> right now, man. I'm like, fucking buy yourself. Like we bought these Jim Bean bottles, and I'm like, don't throw the bottles away, just in case. Let's keep it near you. Like, we're sort of standing there. And I thought shit was going to fucking go down, man, because I'm at their show in their state, standing, like, where they can see me, and nothing there. They didn't leave the stage. They just sort of um, got on the mic and go, oh, to anybody that's come here to start trouble, we don't want trouble, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, what the fuck, man? I'm in your state. I'm in your show. Fucking, you should have like 20 dudes here just fucking pole driving me into the fucking floor, man. But nothing happened. And then Solomon rocked up with about 20 Kiwis. And, um, yeah, we just ended up drinking with them. Then we went out and there yeah, later on, and that was the end of the show. Nothing happened. The first battle for supremacy. Yeah. Now you actually battled in the finals for that, didn't you? In Mel in Melbourne, yeah. Yeah, and that was the one that Delta took out. Yeah. Versus Delta and Hijack. Hijack. That was yeah. wicked. That was now cool. tell us about that night, because that to me is one of, if not the most on stage classic rap battle in Australia. Yeah, that was actually nuts because they were both on on top of the game, like with that. Like music and battling, do you know what I mean? And um, yeah, it was nuts, man. And they naturally, like them two, had this had this thing. Like they they did not like each other. I'm not sure to to this day if they do or not. Like I'm not sure. But back then, nah, man. So it was like fucking. It was like blood in the water. Dudes and dudes wanted to see dudes get ripped apart, and that's what you saw that night. Cause they both came nuts, man, and then flipping off each other. Do you know what I mean? And fucking, it was good. It was good. I was hungover still from the night before, and sleepless, and upset at myself for just not doing shit, but um, for doing shit in the battle. Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, witnessing that, it was crazy. So who else was in that battle? Oh, there was dudes like... Jay Red was DJ in the battle, from memory. Yeah. Um, was Trials in there? No, nah, he wasn't in that one. He was in the year after, I think. The That one. Trials was a sick battler, man. Um, like dudes like... I'm just trying to think. I can't remember the, the New Zealand dudes, but the Australians. Aussie Battler. He was in there. Um, oh, I can't remember, man. Hijack, Delta. Um, See, I remember Hijack, Delta, yourself. Jay Red was DJing. I remember Bliss and Esso had a performance there. They didn't battle. Yeah. That's all I can remember. And they had some goofy-ass host. And they had the, the boxing ring. Yeah, who was the host? I think it was Ken Hill, wasn't it? The host? I'm not too sure. I just remember he was a little bit... Whoever it was, <coughs> he was just a little bit corny and he was wearing some suit thing. Yeah, it's Ken Hill or something like that. Or one of those dudes. One of those dudes anyway. Yeah, that's that's a monumental battle, man. Yeah. And yeah, that was nuts. That some was really nuts. good flips. Uh, Delta had a flip on one of the guys from New Zealand who called him a Smurf. Yeah. And he had that flip, uh, calling me a Smurf, that's your worst verse yet. 
Because I'm part of Smurf boy and you Smurf it. Eh? <laughs> I remember the... <laughs> saying that. And I was just like, oh, shit. That was game right there. Yeah. And I was like, this dude's done. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't Dildo, matter what he says. Dildo's a machine, man. He's a machine. Yeah, I, I'd love to see him battle again. Would never happen. Or, I mean, never say never, but man, it'd be interesting to see how he goes up against dudes now. But what, you mean in that format or the acapella? In in freestyle format, I think he'd still eat dudes up. Yeah. In acapella format, I reckon he'd eat dudes up. Yeah. But you never know until you see it. And some of the younger cats obviously now have sharpened their skills. Yeah. So it would just be Some really of the shit that dudes come out is just fucking nuts, man, eh? Yeah. Like, you, you're sort of like, and this, these dudes should have like English fucking degrees and doctorates and stuff like that. Like, yeah, man. It'd make if I was an MC from back in the day, I'd be looking at it now, going, "Fuck, I'm glad I'm not coming up in this era." Yeah, because shit's just so technical and just hardcore now. Even dudes like Purpose, when Purpose and Prime were doing those um, WRC that, battles. Yeah, fuck. I just thought they've got to they've got to win it. They've got they yeah, those two are dope, huh? Yeah. So good. And just purpose with his freestyle, man. It's just... And Prime. Fucking ridiculous, man, eh? Yeah. Like flips and... I was fucking cheering all the way, man, eh? Yeah, those... Did you see the one, those two versus 360 and Anecdote? Yeah. I can't remember it now, like, fucking... That's a good one. That's You can revisit that on YouTube. Yeah. I started revisiting... Like all the the American ones, you know what I mean? Mm. With that Monster Cody and uh, uh, Marv One. Yeah. That was just hilarious, man, eh? Yeah, there man. was some Canadian dude, little Canadian dude that was skinny and he just, he'd come out with real good shit as well. And Check out a dude now called Sharon. Sharon. Yeah, he's My punched. Shirama. He's punched. His punchline game is fucking out of control. Really man. good. Yeah, dude. His flips. Like, he's, it's all written now. Yeah. He has freestyle in his shit, so he incorporates that. Yeah. Yeah, his flips are fucking bananas, man. See, I'd like to see, like, Delta. I'd like to see Damo do something like that. Do you know what I mean? Make it happen. <laughs> you make it happen. Oh, well, yeah, I'd like. Good. Yeah, even trials, even dudes like that, man. It would be good to see some of these. Like older heads get back in it yeah yeah i know just for the sake of as long as they it. don't do like cannabis well that's what you can't i think that's what dudes would be watching it for to see if anybody gets cannabis yeah <laughs> that was the worst man yeah that was awkward that was fucked man i wish that never happened but yeah it happened it is what it is the, the, the lesson oh yeah